everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are going to be going over the answer to a question I have had for a very long time what is the difference between authority transfer and power exchange and authority transfer is something I have heard pretty much my whole time in the BDSM community. It is really common, especially more on the leather side of everything. It's something you see in class descriptions and in discussion groups and at conferences. And it's just something that people say like, ah, yes, the authority transfer. Everyone knows what that is. Ha ha ha, my fellow experts, let me not define what that means. Let us just continue forward as though it's very obvious. And I just never never really got a solid definition of what exactly it is and how it is or is not different from power exchange. And I have finally sat down and done the research. I have gone all over FetLife in blogs. I have gone on Reddit. I have looked into old archived websites from the 90s and I think I have finally figured it out. And I think if you are someone that is interested in dominant submissive or master slave relationships, this is going to be a really good video to watch because I think knowing what the background differences are between these two things might help you more clearly understand what your motivations are for DS or MS and how you maybe want to shape those and what you're looking to get from those types of connections. And it's really interesting to me because as the BDSM community, we love a good philosophical discussion or debate. You guys probably already know what it is, right? You know, people that are like, well, what about SSC or REC? Who gets to decide what safe and sane actually means? What about prick? Can you, as a slave, have limits in an MS relationship? Is that even possible? And we love just getting into those types of discussions, but they tend to be more overarching. They tend to be something that's more about how you do play in general not something that's more directed at what you would get out of a DS or MS type relationship. And I think that's really where the difference is between these two things, authority transfer and power exchange and how those two things are either different or similar philosophically. Now I'm going to start with authority transfer because I am assuming that is the one that fewer of you are going to be familiar with. It is also referred to as AT or in the case of total authority transfer, that would be TAT, which does that have any other meanings as an acronym? Is TAT or AT used for anything else? Let me know down below. I'd be curious because of course we love a good, you know, confusing use of a BDSM slash non BDSM acronym. We want to have another CBT. Ideally, that would be really fun. But in any case, with authority transfer, I will say that I did find one website which said in really big bold letters on the home page authority transfer is not bdsm it's not a kink thing and they were really adamant about it but as far as i can tell that website is just totally dead they have like an outline of like articles they wanted to write and then never did so i don't know what's going on there i'm going to assume that's not representative of how most people think of authority transfer i wasn't able to find a clear date for when this began to be used in the way that you have, for example, with like SSC or rack or prick or things like that. And I also wasn't able to find who exactly started it. So that's still a little bit of a mystery. However, I do think it most likely started within the BDSM community as opposed to being something that started outside of it. However, I was able to find a common definition amongst many of the sources I looked at, which is that authority transfer is where the parties retain their own power, but one is giving up their authority to the other. And on the A to Z of sex podcast with Dr. Lori Beth Bisbee, that is quite the tongue twister, she interviewed Master Seku and Slave Luna about authority transfer as well as other aspects of their dynamic and BDSM in general. And as part of that, Slave Luna did share a story, an example to represent how she personally defines authority transfer. One example Luna gave was of driving in the car. She said the rule is no cell phone use in the car. 
She told me about picking up the phone without even thinking about it and Master Seku saying put the phone down. She said that when she got to the next traffic light, she picked up the phone again and he took the phone and threw it down the well on his side of the car. Luna described having the power to pull over to the side of the road and curse Master Seku out and pick up her phone as she pays for the bill on the phone. She said she didn't have the authority to do that because she had surrendered to Master Seku and given him authority over her, and it is his responsibility to keep them both safe. In writing for Kink Weekly, Joji Sada describes that authority transfer, in particular total authority transfer, is an agreement between two individuals where one is yielding decisions to the other while still retaining the ability to make opposing decisions if they choose to. Authority might be given up, but the right to have that authority can be revoked at any time without fear of punishment or reprisal. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that I agree 100% with either of these definitions or either of these ways of thinking about authority transfer. They were simply the most clear examples that I could find because I have seen people all across the spectrum to find it just a little bit differently. Like it's about giving up both power and authority or just authority or whatever else, you know, it's going to be a little bit of an individual interpretation, but I think I am a little bit more partial towards Master Seku's and Slave Luna's descriptions. Now I do think there is a tendency to define authority transfer through its difference from power exchange versus something that stands on its own. So for example, in the Kink Weekly article I just mentioned, power exchange is defined as being different because it's a system whereby someone gives up the power to make their own decisions versus retaining that ability to make opposing decisions. Whereas for Master Seku, he defines it as being something where one person is holding power over another and so the person who gave up the power is thereby diminished because they are powerless. Yet other people prefer the term authority transfer over power exchange because they take issue with the exchange part of that phrase because there can be an implication in that that there's more of a back and forth. What is it that the submissive is getting back from the dominant? Are they getting power or authority from the dom in some way? Is that saying that the submissive has power and control over the dom in some fashion as well? And so people don't necessarily like that because it can make it sound like it's more egalitarian than I think people intend for it to be. That there's not really this back and forth, that power is really only flowing in one direction. And so because of that, some people consider power exchange to be a misnomer or some kind of mislabeling or misunderstanding of what is really happening in a dominant submissive or a master-slave relationship. And maybe this all really comes back to that favorite common saying that submissives really have all the power that because it's an exchange the submissive is really allowing the dominant to have authority which really means that the submissive is the one with the authority because if they don't give up their power then there's no power for the dominant to take and so they're really the ones in control it's only through their allowance that ds or ms is even able to happen at all or something like that. It gets kind of confusing when you think back and forth about all the potential layers there. And I can certainly see for a lot of people, even the majority of you watching, that this distinction, this overthinking is really just splitting hairs. It's really just a semantic thing. And certainly a lot of people do see it that way. I did come across a lot of resources where authority transfer and power exchange were used synonymously with each other. And there wasn't really that big of a difference. Yet for other people, the mentality is a huge, huge difference. And the way you are thinking mentally about what you're doing in DS or MS is very different between power exchange and authority transfer. So for example, someone might really like the idea of having a DS relationship, but they aren't comfortable with the idea of giving up their power in order to make that happen, either because they think that might make them lesser or because for some reason internally, they want to hold on to that. Maybe it's important for their self-esteem or self-image in some way, but they do like the idea of someone having authority over them, of someone else being the one to be in charge, but they don't don't want to become powerless in order to achieve that. 
And I do think there can be some good elements to that. However, I do think it can point to some bias, maybe holding on to the vanilla idea that is so commonly associated as a stereotype of submissive people being weak-willed or powerless or being stepped on and needing someone else to control their lives for them and take power from them in order to basically allow the submissive to function. So maybe it's about having a different way to describe your desires to avoid fitting in with that negative stereotype. But hey, I think really as long as something is speaking to you internally and it resonates and it feels like something that is accurately describing what it is you need and want from a relationship, I really say go for it. The only thing I ever ask from people is to really examine where those wants and desires come from and to just be conscious of the way that they are making decisions and how they define themselves and what it is they are labeling or not labeling. And I think this may also stem a little bit from a desire to maintain a sense of control because oh my gosh, giving up all of your power to someone else, that seems totally bananas that could go super super wrong right like someone could totally decide to violate that or go back on their agreements and if you no longer have the power internally you feel or have externally given it up you might not feel like you were able to stand up for your boundaries or point out when something is going wrong or give an opposing point of view because you think, oh, well, it's not my place to give that other opinion. It's not my place to point out when something is going wrong or seems like a really bad idea. And I don't think that always has to be the case for a power exchange relationship by default. But if that is the mentality that you associate with power exchange, if you feel like giving up internally in your head, knowing I gave up my power to someone else, if that would make you think in that way, that's not necessarily going to be healthy for you. And going back to that car example that Slave Luna gave earlier, I think maybe the power exchange version of that scenario is not having the power anymore to pull over to the side of the road and curse your partner out. That it's a foregone conclusion that you no longer have the ability to do that versus making the choice to not do that because you are reminded of your surrender and that that is simply how you choose to continue living in your relationship. I think there can be a part of authority transfer that is much more of an active thing that people might find appealing, that giving up authority is an active choice you have to do on a moment by moment basis, that you have to be willing to give over to someone else's decisions as opposed to, I think, with power exchange, maybe for people that prefer authority transfer, they might think about it like, well, you're just kind of like flopping over and giving up your power, giving up your ability to make decisions. And so it's just like a foregone conclusion as opposed to being more of an active choice. And again, it could just be splitting hairs. I do know people that are very, very like, completely sure that there is a huge important difference and they only want to do authority transfer and power exchange doesn't work for them doesn't make sense they see it as a totally different thing and for other people they're like I don't know, it seems like it's kind of basically the same. I'm a little bit more towards the, I think it's more similar than it's not. I do think it is more of a mentality difference than anything else. But again, we love philosophical differences in the world of kink, right? Like with SSC versus rec, it's really all about consent at the end of the day, but how you think about that consent, how you think about that process can be different. So it's actually really funny because I, <laughs> there's a class that's happening tonight, like a couple hours after I film this, that is going to be talking about authority transfer as part of that. Unfortunately, with my schedule, it doesn't work out to take the class and then film this. So who knows? It might actually be totally different than what I am describing here. I have tried my best to, I think, summarize as many different sources as possible. But again, it's going to be up to your own personal interpretation and what you take into the phrases of authority transfer or power exchange. And I would love to know what you all think about this in a comment down below. Do you know about both of these terms? Do you prefer or use one term over over the other. Do you see them as being really different or basically the same? I would love to know again what you all are thinking in a comment down below. If you did enjoy this video, if you're not already, please do subscribe. 
I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you really, really want to support what I do, the best we can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.